Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and we do a lot of network engineering and consulting, and the products we do consult on include some of the Unify products, which brings up the question, Tom, you talk about these warehouse jobs or these large-scale deployments of Unify, but you kind of skipped over the fact that you didn't use a USG or Unify Dream Machine or pro models of either one of those in your video. And there's a reason for that. And they have some shortcomings. Now I'm not here to just tell you it's a crappy product and don't buy it. I want to make sure you're a more informed consumer because that's ultimately what the goal is here is to make sure you understand what it can do, what it can't do, and then make your decision on whether or not you want to purchase that device. Now this is October of 2021. So these are the things and features or shortcomings it has as of right now. If sometime in the future they release a different model that has better features, that's awesome. But right now, this is where we're at. So think about that when you're looking at it because they may fix all these issues, but eh, as of right now, they haven't. Now, one of the problems I'm going to say that Unify has solved better than probably anyone out there and why they're such a popular topic is making network equipment easier to use. The Unify Software Defined Networking Controller is a really nice, in the big picture of things, way to manage a lot of devices without licensing fees. This is one of the reasons we like their switches and their access points so much. They've made it easy to use. They've made it easy for scalable use from companies like myself who manage outside networks for companies and putting it all in one controller. And it makes for a really nice product. But that one little component is the USG and not having the best firewall features is why I end up not recommending it. So I want to make this list here of the shortcomings so you can be informed about before you buy it. And we'll start with the Unified Dream Machine and Dream Machine Pro. And that first shortcoming really comes down to the forced registration. Some people get really angry about this. I think rightfully so, because forcing someone to register the device in order to get it to work is not, in my opinion, a great idea. They changed it. This is not a feature it had before, but at one point it, they decided that was how it's going to work. I don't think in the very beginning it did. I could be wrong, but I know right now it does if you want to run any of the latest firmware. This is very problematic because one of two things can happen. One, registration server can go down and then you can't register or get your device configured. Two, if something happens and they discontinue a product line and discontinuing offering registration for it, you have a product that can't be turned on anymore. Now, the registration is only for getting it set up. Once it's set up, it doesn't need to have that registration server at Unify be up and running. But yeah, this is kind of a, a problem in my opinion, but it may be the first reason you don't want to buy it. No official WireGuard support. I say official because yes, there are third-party projects to get it working. And yes, someone may point out it's even embedded into the kernel on the Dream Machine, which hints at a future roadmap where they've deeply integrated this. We are talking about October of 2021 where these things are not available and not officially supported on there. Same thing goes with OpenVPN. They have OpenVPN, but it's designed for site-to-site -site work, not for user VPN. Once again, sometime in the future, they may fix this, but right now that's not a feature. Related to that and very directly related is the no outbound VPN policy routing that you can do, so to speak. Now, what this is, is a common request people have where they want to take a segment of their network and say, I would like to policy route this over a privacy style VPN, either they set up themselves or one of the services that offered on there. The way to do that would be going to the command line and configuring things. And uh, we don't support that on the UDM. It's not that you can't. I'm glad that Unify opened up the fact that you can do things from the command line. But obviously, this starts breaking the idea that this is supposed to be this really nice, easy to use all in one interface. You can't just check a few boxes and have it work. This is kind of a problem that a lot of people run into. Now, from the business side of it, the no granular control for the failover is a problem when it fails over and doesn't fail over back to the other side when you put it on WAN 1, WAN 1 fails, it fails to WAN 2. It doesn't give you good solid granular control. This is kind of an issue for businesses where we need to understand and need to have a better, more detailed control over this. For home users, it's probably fine, but we're talking more, a little bit more on the business use case. And then again, some home users may have that and want to have that greater control. A lot of times I've seen the answer just being, I'm plugging the second WAN, and it'll fail over to the first one again. This seems like a non-great solution. Now, the next one is going to be kind of related to that, and it's the multiple IPs on the USG. I have no idea why this feature request has 
been hanging out there for so long and it's still a problem. They did add it to the Unified Dream Machine Pro line so you can do multiple IP addresses on a single network interface, but still not available on the USG. This is obviously a huge problem for the business side of the house because, well, lots of times companies have even a small block of IP addresses for a couple different services they have running. And uh, without being able to do that officially through the UI, you're left with editing a config on the back end, which may break when you do an update, which has actually occurred and why we don't support consulting on that particular topic right there. So once again, official support is the key word here. Now, the things that they do a nice job of is the DPI and having a really nice dashboard. And I do like this dashboard. It is really nice. I can look at my devices in here. I can see what's connected. I can look at client devices and kind of get an idea with some insight in here. But the insight is very limited. It doesn't give you deep insight. It doesn't give you nice, clear website lists. It doesn't have easy time slicing so I can really drill into the data. You have some very general overview data and I can set it to display one week one month and give you a little bit better idea, but it's still not very detailed overall. That doesn't let me dive into it. Plus this client's not on the network, so we don't even know the client name. It just does this, but clone clients are on the network. Go back to client devices. Like it sees my pixel four that I put on here and uh, it sees the win 10 lab system that I put on here. But once again, it's nice. It's a really nice dashboard in terms of looks, but when it comes to action items, it isn't near as good as some of your enterprise firewalls. But there is not all bad here. Let me explain. If none of the aforementioned features were reasons for you not to buy it because you're just looking to get the routing done and you're not worried about those VPN issues or where the support's going with it and you don't really need detailed DPI stats, well, it does have built-in threat management. That is not granular, but pretty good. They give you a nice dashboard for it so you can turn on and off threat management. It is a nice, specifically the UDM, UDM Pro, all-in-one device that can run your network where you can tie in a few Wi-Fi. They make building separated networks really easy. There's a little bit of a debate, and this is comes down to network engineering opinions of differences, but when you create new VLANs, the default rule is allow all devices to talk to each other. That can be easily circumvented by just go ahead and choose guest network and it will not allow those devices on separate VLANs to talk to each other. But overall, as I said in the beginning, Unify's done a amazing job of making it really easy for people who don't have network engineering degrees to get in there and build a network where you have several different segments and check a couple boxes to make those guest segments so they can't talk to the other networks and you can get that done pretty easy. I don't think any company I've seen really has done such a nice job of integrating all that together with a really easy to use dashboard and putting it really in the hands of consumers. So that's a good reason to buy the device. And overall, it's obviously going to be substantially better than whatever your ISP for your internet has provided you. Um, it's going to be better than probably 99% of the things you can buy off the shelf from a big box store, you know, your, your Netgear style routers, all that different consumer stuff that's out there. So I think it's a good replacement for that. I think it's really solid for the home users. And yes, I have family that I have put these in at and because they're an all in one device, especially the little cylinder one I actually kind of like that one uh, for a small apartment works great. Plus, you can add another Wi Fi device to it, tie it together one dashboard. It's clean. It's simple. It's easy on those type of aspects. I think Unify is a good choice to buy. But I wanted to make this video so you can be a more informed consumer and decide which one works for you. So as long as you go into this knowing and you know it won't do certain things and it will do other things and the overall reliability is still there, I will say that because the ones that we have put out for people who don't dive deep into tinkering with it, they just kind of set it, forget it, use the internet, watch some Netflix and uh, have a good time. It does work really well. If you're a more advanced user, you might want to look at more advanced firewalls and I'll bring them up. The two that you'll see the most popular on this channel is going to be Untangle and PFSense. I've talked a lot about them and they work perfectly fine with Unify. We've put these firewalls in many places and had lots of Unify switches and access points behind them that even scale into as many as 300 access points and as many switches was needed to support that had no problem putting PFSense on the front end because they needed the more advanced features that were just not available in the USG or the Unified Dream Machine line of product. So the opinions in this are all my own. I just want to hopefully make you a more informed consumer. And this will be my reply video to people who ask, well, why don't you use a Unify routing product when you do these large scale network setups? All right, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. 
If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a Sure project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there is a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.